Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Alex and this is The Car Creative. And in today's video, I'm gonna be giving you a full breakdown on all of the gear that I have versus what I actually use on a daily basis. I know that having all this gear isn't accessible for absolutely everyone. And that's kind of why I wanna make this video is like, what do you actually need? Like actually need instead of just getting the coolest stuff. So I wanted to make a breakdown of what I use daily versus what I do not use daily. And maybe that will inform some of your guys' decisions moving forward on what gear to get. Now, what I'm gonna do with you guys is start first and foremost with the cameras that I use, and then we'll move into the lenses and then deep inside here we've got little accessories and doodads and stuff that I bring on every single shoot with me that's really important. Now some of you have been following me for a while and I used to be a Sony guy and I still love the Sony cameras and would still recommend Sony cameras to you depending on the price bracket that you're looking for. But I did go with the Canon R5 and the Canon R6 as my main bodies in 2021. Now the reason for that for me is because they work well within the ecosystem that I have built. For example, we are filming this video on a Canon C200, which is a cinema camera. The reason that camera is amazing is because you can put the audio directly into the camera, no syncing issues, it shoots in 4K, 8-bit. It just does a really good job and of course is capable of shooting raw. Now on the daily, I'm going to be going with the Canon R5. The reason for that is that it shoots up to 8K raw. It does on the daily and what I like to shoot at, which is 4K. Uh, it does up to 10-bit color, 422, which is a great color codec, which just means it sees more colors in the spectrum. For those of us that are doing a little bit more heavy color grading or are working professionally, having that 10-bit codec actually helps a ton with bringing back the colors or manipulating colors in video specifically. Now, both the Canon R5 and the Canon R6 can do 4K 24, 4K 60. The Canon R5 can do 4K 120, uh, which is crazy. And it's so fun to shoot with that. And of course, the Canon R5 and the Canon R6 have the flip out LCD screen, which is so ridiculously handy for you Sony users that are still on the a7 III. This is a huge thing. Imagine like you're getting down low and you see pop the screen up. It's so, so, so helpful and you don't really know it till you so you got it. So for videography, clearly the Canon R5 and the Canon R6 are very, very capable. I mostly use the R6 for vlogging, and if I'm not doing any professional jobs, I'll use the Canon R6 for photography as well because the file sizes are fully sufficient, fully manageable. I believe it's a 20 megapixel or so camera. The Canon R5 is about a 45 megapixel camera and can shoot incredible photos, but oddly, I believe the R6 is better in low light, so more of an equivalent towards the Sony a7 III. So if you're looking to get into the Canon ecosystem, I'd suggest the Canon R6. The autofocus, in my opinion, is better than the Sony's. The user interface, in my opinion, is better than the Sony's. But they all have pros and cons. I believe that the Sony has better dynamic range. So there's lots of things to keep in mind as well as your budget, what you can get either new or used. Now on the Canon R5 and R6, I have these adapters. These are natively RF mounted glass. I think RF mounted glass is probably phenomenal, but it's also phenomenally expensive. So I tend to use the EF glass that I've purchased and much of it is Sigma, which we'll get into in this row of lenses here. As a hybrid shooter, this is such a cool adapter for me because it has a built in ND filter. Now, for those of you who know me, obviously this is the Car Creative channel. A built in ND filter allows me to actually put a polarizer filter on the front of my lens. So having this on the back side and a polarizer filter on the front side makes my car photography and videography kind of just work really seamlessly together. And I love that feature, super helpful. And then on the R6, I have a general just kind of RF to EF adapter. This one does have a ring on the front of it so you can control things like ISO aperture of your lens if you so choose on that. And of course, we've got the little GoPro here, guys. The GoPro is great for just mounting on vehicles or anywhere or just action cam stuff. The drone that I've gone with, this is the DJI Mavic 2 Pro with the Hasselblad glass on it. This drone is absolutely phenomenal, to be honest. For video, it does shoot up to 10-bit quality color, which makes a huge difference when you're trying to bring back the saturation in your images. An amazing photography camera as well, but I mostly use it for videography. I don't know if I'd fully recommend if you're just getting into it now. I bought this a couple years ago. The DJI Air 2S, 
I think is out now, and that seems to be a good enough drone for both professional and kind of fun work that you want to do on the side. Now moving over here, this guy I do bring on absolutely every job. This is the DJI Ronin RS2. It's a phenomenal piece of kit. Uh, it's super lightweight, it's carbon fiber. I did an unboxing, which you can see here. Paired with the autofocus on the Canons, this system and the R5 or the R6 is just absolutely phenomenal. Uh, so I bring this on every job. I use it for car photography, videography, real estate. Now, starting on the left side or your right, I don't know. We have the Sigma 70 to 200. This is the DG, I believe they call it like their sports lens. It has an 82 millimeter thread. And of course it's just an absolute beast. Now again, with Sigma, you are getting into heavier lenses. This thing's quite heavy, but it does everything you need. It has optical image stabilization, which some of them don't. It has manual focus, half manual focus, two different versions of stabilization, a beast of a lens and awesome. So I don't use it too much, but that is definitely in the kit here. Now, one other one I have is the Sigma 50 to 100. I picked up this lens many years ago because we were using the Canon C200 or the C100 even at the time. Now, this is a crop sensor lens as well as the 18 to 35 that we're filming it with. Something to be aware of when you're looking into the Sigma glass, the 18 to 35 and the 50 to 100, they seem like incredible options because they cover such a great range at an aperture of f1. 1.8 so highly recommend if you are using any crop sensor cameras these lenses are phenomenal they're heavy but they're amazing and they will be good for you for years and years and years so highly recommend looking into the 50 to 100 or the 18 to 35 if you're on a crop sensor now moving on this is the canon macro 100 millimeter lens a beautiful lens. It does have image stabilization. Obviously great for close-ups and obviously Peter McKinnon loves this lens. A lot of people love this lens. Next up on the table we have the Sigma 24 to 70. Now a 24 to 70 lens in any kit is so dependable. It covers an amazing focal range and usually at an aperture of 2.8 which lets just enough light in for your average day, sometimes your average night, and especially if you've got a camera that can handle dynamic range like a then a 70 to 200 is something that will likely live in your kit on a daily basis. This Sigma one that I have here is really nice. It's beautifully built. This one has an 82 millimeter thread and we'll get into why those threads are more important a little later on because of ND filters and CPL filters. Cons I would say for this is that it's big and it's a little bit heavy compared to some of the other options. Now, of course, most people got this guy and you're willing to throw it around a little bit, but this is the Nifty 50. This is the version two. So it's not the first version and it's not the RF glass version. It is the EF version two, which means that it has actually a metal mount here instead of the plastic mount. Again, not something that makes its way into my kit super often, but if you're looking to get into prime lenses and you just want to start with something, this thing is so cheap and actually the image quality is pretty great. I did do a video review on it and I'll leave the link here. And if it's not here, it'll be in the description below uh, shooting my old Tacomas. Getting into my favorite lens of all time, folks. This is the Sigma 35 millimeter F 1.4. Now it looks a little funky on the end here because I have some step up rings again to make it into an 82 millimeter thread diameter so I can thread on my ND filters or polarizer filters. This lens for me is this is it. If I could have one lens in my kit at any time ever is a 35 millimeter and specifically I love the Sigma 35 millimeter. This one here is a bit more of a rare lens. This is a Sigma 20 mil and I don't know if I'd recommend it for everybody, but it does an incredible job at interior photography as well as vlogging. So a lot of the vlogs you see paired with the R5 and the built-in ND on this side makes it absolutely incredible because as you can see it's a bit of a bulb lens now the issue with bulb lenses you can't get any nds on the front so for videography and for photography you can't get any filters on the front as well so that's one of the cons to these things but if you have specialty uses like me shooting interiors of car photography or landscapes for example it's fantastic for or vlogging again a really cool lens and this one makes it into my kit a little bit more than it used to um, because i'm kind of falling in love with it 
a little bit. Okay, so there's a quick rundown of all of the gear that I have. Now let's hop into the Pelican case and I will show you guys what I would put in there if I was going on a shoot, because obviously you can take everything, as well as some of the accessories that I need on a daily basis and um, what I bring on a shoot. Okay guys, so as I was mentioning in my case, I have a ton of filters. Filters like ND filters, we got polarizer filters, we've got a lure filters, and this one here is kind of a misty pro mist filter. Um, these are all sent to me from Nissi Global, an incredible glass uh, brand, and they sent them to me, which I'm super grateful for. If you're looking for not as high of quality glass, that's totally fine, it totally works, so just check some of the links down below because I've used everything from uh, Amazon Basics to Polaroid to now Nissi because they were gracious enough to send them to me. Diving inside here, we also have the Rode Video Micro, which I use for vlogging or any scratch audio. If I'm not using this as my main audio source, I'll be using these Sennheiser wireless mic packs. These are incredibly high quality and I'll plug them into my Zoom H4. So this is how I do some of my kind of onboard audio for any professional gigs. Now these guys here, these are so handy. Now if you're like me and a car photographer or videographer, walkie talkies, you can get them so cheap, but man, they will make your life so much easier when you're on a shoot, just being able to talk to people, give this to your driver, give this to your subject, whatever it is, just get these. They're so, so helpful. So these live in my case as well. Uh, chargers. Generally, I don't take these with me, but they live in there as well as batteries. So we've got Canon batteries. Always bring in extra double A's because you never know when you're going to need double A's. So I just get the Amazon Basics ones as well. Uh, a screwdriver. This one is a super small one that comes with a whole bunch of different kind of threads in it, which makes it super easy. Don't leave home without this guy. Base plates for tripods. And that's pretty well it for what goes in here. Now, if I was to kit up for a video, what I'm going to bring with me is first and foremost, the Canon R5. And the lens that I would put on my Canon R5 is, you guys know what, the Sigma 35 mil. Now I can use this for video B-roll. I can use this for photography. Um, if I need to swap out some of the adapters, I can do that. So this is going to go into my kit right in the center there. The R6 typically, typically, you never know, it, I'm going to put on the 20 mil lens. Now this for me, uh, I do a ton of real estate. I do a ton of vlogging. I do a ton of car stuff. So the R6 is going to have the 20 mil and that's going to slot in here. Now the next lens I'm going to bring in here is the 70 to 200 and that's just going to slot in there. Oftentimes this will end up going back on the R6 for photography or videography B-roll if I'm not using the R5 with a 35 mil. Next, of course, I need my microphone. Scratch audio is gonna go in there. I need my batteries, so they're gonna slide in here. Depending on what I'm shooting, what subject I'm shooting, if there's a human in it, then I'll wrap these guys up, tuck them in here, as well as the zoom recorder. Now, I do have an extension that I can plug those directly into the camera if I need to. Um, then we've got, of course, our walkie-talkies. We bring the GoPro if and when we're shooting kind of video reviews or car reviews that I can strap this inside the car, outside the car, that's when this guy will sit in here. Uh, a pretty robust little guy. So that sits in there too. Don't need the charger. I'm not gonna bring this unless I'm doing detail work. I'm not gonna bring this unless I'm shooting on the Canon C200. I'm not gonna bring this because the 70 to 200 covers this focal length pretty well, so not fully necessary. I would bring this if I had a very specific job that I needed to shoot something far away. A lot of people love long focal lengths, but as you guys can tell, I really like shooting at 35, so I'm a bit more of like a mid-range shooter as preference. Now I do have a backpack, of course, that I bring as well. So if I was gonna bring it, I would just tuck this in my backpack along with one of my other cameras and make sure that this is accessible. I'll generally just bring my circular polarizer filter and my ND filter. So there we go, guys. That is everything that I would put into my Pelican case on the go. Now, of course, the DJI Ronin kind of just comes as its own setup. And typically before I go on a job, I'll balance the RS2 with the camera system and the lens that I intend to use. The drone has its own bag, so you just sling that over your shoulder on the way as well. So I hope, guys, that this gives you a little bit more direction in when you are wading through this world of gear and complicated stuff. This is a stuff that I've landed on and makes my day and my
my work super easy. Now, of course, if you guys have any questions on any of this gear, um, please leave a comment down below and I'll try and get to you. If you enjoyed watching this video, if you felt it was informative, helpful, uh, whatever, just consider hitting that like button for me. And if you wanna see some of the work that I enjoy doing, which is specifically automotive, uh, or wanna hang out with me and the community that we're building here, you can check me out on Instagram and subscribe to this YouTube channel. And I do hope to see you in the next one. Peace, guys.